Griffin. And that's a goal, and it's Paul Stewart. That's his first for Stoke. More city for the new stadium than expectation of a memorable contest. A visit from Rochdale was hardly the most auspicious start, but it did provide a gentle opener to highlight the little problems to be solved before the fans arrive again for Saturday's league game with some home fell to Graham Kavanagh. And even if the game itself wasn't memorable, this little piece of history most certainly. Sigurdsson to Graham Kavanagh. Now Pickering. Kavanagh. Forsyth drifting to the far post. In goes Forsyth. He wasn't sufficiently picked up, and Richard Forsyth has sneaked in to deliver the first goal of the game. 33 minutes gone. Fuovo again. Walters supporting him. And Smith, who certainly isn't shirking his responsibilities since coming on, he made himself available. Constantly. That's good, and it's not a bad ball in either. Allison swept in. 1 1. And the goal that Swindon will feel they deserve. 13 minutes left. It's Stoke 1, Swindon 1. Wayne Allison. His second goal of the season. And he took it superbly. Certainly, the better football in the second half has come from Swindon. Gooden, who supplied the cross for the goal. Walters there with him too. McDonald a target in the middle, so is Seagraves. He sneaked in at the far post. This is Chris Hay, lining up the shot. What a good goal from Hay. And Swindon have turned this game around. Two goals laid on. Two in three minutes now. And it's Chris Hay. His third goal for his new club. Make themselves at home at the Britannia Stadium. And at the fourth attempt, they christened their new home with a win. Ray Wallace gave them a half-time lead. But that was soon cancelled out by an old West Midlands firm. Tom Bennett's free kick, guided home by the evergreen Andy Much for Stockport. Stokes' match winner was their record signing, Peter Thorne. Signs of him getting his act together with Paul Stewart now. Thorne had no right to make the cross his, but he did. The striker is never judged on how, but how many. Thorne, eight minutes before the break. And in the second half, Stoke really made the second leg a stroll. Thorne scored his second with a far post header. Fourth under the keeper. Porter Stoke. The city's third consecutive win was fashioned around two more goals for Peter Thorne in an outstanding first half display at Ipswich. Under 21 international goalkeeper Richard Wright didn't have quite such a happy afternoon. When he spilled Kevin Keane's corner, the ball found its way magnetically for Thorne to score for the fourth time in two games. Ipswich have won only once in the league so far this season. It was maybe a good time to visit, but before Stoke regained their grip with a goal 10 minutes into the second half, dispatched poorly by Paul Stewart. That wasn't quite the end of the story though, because Mark Steen engineered a second Ipswich goal for Matt Holland, with nine goals scored in their last three games. Came in bizarre circumstances. The referee interrupted a goal mouth melee and created another with a drop ball in a crowded area which saw Stoke and Kevin Keane prosper. It's doubtful if this is the sort of goal you'll see anywhere again this season. Peter Thorne then scored his sixth goal in four games. Stoke won 6-0 overall. It's Bristol City. The goal, when it came from Kevin Campbell, was his fourth of the season. It cheered the Forest fans and helped to maintain a table-topping position.
Not much for the fans to cheer about, not that there were many fans there. Joey Beecham's run was the most exciting thing all day, but it came to nothing. And thank goodness someone was on the ball. Nigel Jemson rescued a point for United. On, look back well then to Keane. This is Kavanagh. Good effort. And Stoke are in front. A real scare at the other end, but now they have struck through Graham Kavanagh. His first goal in the league. He's got five in the League Cup. And there was so much to admire there about the build-up and the finish. Keane, who led it invitingly into his path, finishes team's lead, and does so in the most incredible racket goal. Reed Keane with a run here, and then Forsyth without even barely looking up. Delivering oh, Muggles here for Thorne, and Thorne's through, and he squeezes it past Simon Tracy. Stoke City take the lead. Chance here maybe to get back on level terms. Dean with a header, great save. And in off the underside of the crossbar. Stewart. Keen's header. Chance for Thorne again, and he scores twice. Sheffield United one, Stoke City two. So, the Blades having to come from behind again. Good run through. Great save, turned in. Fiatov the scorer. Uh, square. Dean, oh he got the final touch and it creeps in. It's 3-2 to Sheffield United. Ryan Dean the scorer. but he made sure second time around that was tough on Stoke City but they continued to stretch and turn Sheffield United's creaking defence and when Graham Kavanagh cut down the left Richard Forsyth was first to the cross four minutes from the end Stoke's first win in eight games loomed large Kevin Keane's never say die attitude was the key teeing up Peter Thorne for what appeared to be the winner. But as the home crowd screamed for the final whistle, Nigel Spackman's side kept wonderfully cool to construct an excellent equaliser, looped in agonisingly for the Stoke fans by the head of Brian Dean. So Connor pushed it back in. Thorne was there and it's going to go in! And a disaster for Stoke. Just four minutes gone, and Birmingham go ahead. A sloppy goal, but that won't disappoint Trevor Francis. They all count. And it was a build-up on the right-hand side that began the goal. The challenge from Bruce, but uh, McKenzie picks up. Furlong uh, wins it back. Here's Hughes, he scored the first. On the left-hand side, he's got to take on uh, Griffin, he's round him. Oh, what a goal! Brian Hughes, it's two in ten minutes! A fabulous strike! 21 years old, and he's got two goals. Birmingham City, two goals up. And is also... Having a back deep, but can't get it out. Birmingham retain the upper hand, keep the pressure up. Arsenal calling for it. That's Q. Birmingham being pushed back to their own line. Ball that did not go out of play. Stoke felt it did. Forster turns. And the luck of the bounce there, he's through on his right foot! Nicky Forster, and it's three! Well, a little bit of good fortune, but he certainly made it count.
Another one says he comes from County Durham. Good header, here's Furlong. Oh! It was like a practice game. Not that that'll worry the uh, Birmingham fans, I think they probably make up most of that figure. Lovely throw to McCarthy. And he's got it in! John McCarthy from an impossible angle! Well, we've got a fan on the pitch and having a few words there just to spoil things. He gets it back. It was a good touch from Forsyth, but Stoke unable to get anything going. And Birmingham, well, standing still, they don't need to make the pace. Ray Wallace. Griffin. Again, it breaks down for Stoke. Oh, lovely skills. Beautiful skills here as uh, Forster gets through. This is Furlong. Oh, what a lovely finish. Paul Furlong. It's number 12 for him and it's number 6 for Birmingham. Just over two minutes to go. Charlton has the throw. Marsden, Charlton again. Marsden prods one in, that's headed it, and love, Furlong. Oh, he's got it in! Paul Furlong's hat-trick! A curious goal. The ball threaded into the defence. John McCarthy hit one in the 56th minute just before that. And finally, Paul Furlong completed his hat-trick, three minutes from the end, to make a fantastic final score. Stoke City nil. Birmingham City, seven. Albion here, but uh, Whittle's right boot got in the way of that uh, attempted pass. Dobson. Half away by Keane. This is Kilban again. Nicholson, a chance to stretch his legs, gets the ball in. Missed by Sigurdsson. This is Evans. And that will surely be a free kick to West Bromwich Albion. So who's it going to be? It's going to be Kilban, is it? It's going to be Schnakers. That's the breakthrough. It's his first goal since December. And Albion take the lead on 28 minutes. Nicholson. He's got Hamilton with him, but he uses Kilban instead. Here is Hamilton, who is captain for the night. Flicks it in to Hunt, but Whittle's there first. And two Stoke players go for the same ball. Schnakers again! Oh, it's two! It was deflected, but Snakers won't care. And it's West Bromwich Albion 2. Stoke City 0. This is Paul Stewart. This is Richard Forsyth. It might open up for him here. Paul Stewart. My fourth for Thorne. It's in. It's Gabbiadini. 16 minutes into the second half, and Gabbiadini has given Stoke City a lifeline. This is Hunt again. He's worked tirelessly tonight. Hasn't really had a sight of goal, to be fair. Hughes again. What it goes to Nicholson. And can Hughes get to this one? Pickering prevents the corner. Hughes. Decent ball in, Kilban. Oh, it's in! Well, that will surely settle it now. Thousands spend the first 15 minutes of this game outside the Britannia Stadium. They arrive just in time to see John McGinley profit from a Bradford corner and bundle the ball just over the line. The director did his best to miss it, but this time Stoke didn't crumble. Ten minutes later, the Bradford defender Andrew O'Brien was adjudged to have handled Kevin Keane's corner. It was the big break Stoke manager Chick Bates desperately needed. After that 7-0 humiliation and an FA Cup exit, another defeat would have been unacceptable. Richard Forsyth not only scored the penalty, he was involved in the move soon after, but that enabled striker Peter Thorne to squeeze in Stoke's winner. Stoke's beleaguered chairman Peter Coates has now resigned, but manager Bates... Good lads, feeling good? 
Stoke boss Chris Kamara has every confidence in his own ability and in the dressing room pre-match it was something he was trying to get through to his players. Go on, be confident. Very good. Come on, boys. And even though his first match in charge ended in defeat, he has big-time ambitions for the club. It's um, an opportunity for me to, um, to show that I am decent at doing the job, that I can take a club as big as Stoke City and hopefully take it to the Premier League. That's the burning desire now that I have to do, is, um, is take them to the Premier League. Floodlight failure delayed the kick-off at the county ground for a quarter of an hour, but once the lights came on, it was Stoke who were the brighter of the two sides. Peter Thorne's header, though, was tipped over by Steve Mildenhall. And they went even closer when, after Kevin Keane's cross, Thorne shot rebounded off the post. Frustrating for Kamara, and having gone eight without a win, worrying for Swindon boss Steve McMahon. Swindon didn't have a serious shot at goal until early in the second half, when David Thompson fired just over. But it was Stoke who still looked the more likely winners. However, Thorne, a former Swindon player, completed a hat-trick of missed chances, steering this one wide of the upright. Somehow, you knew it wasn't going to be their night. And when defender Kofi Nyama failed to clear properly, Mark Robinson made them pay dearly. His goal, 19 minutes from time, gave Swindon victory and stopped them slipping even further down the table. And I'm not too disappointed because I saw enough out there tonight to know that there's a lot of quality within the club. There was um, good play from the midfield. Thorne led the line very well and the defence looked as if it was never going to be breached. And uh, as I said, we looked a class above them at times, but didn't have the finish. Kamara will have noted the task ahead of him, but after his introduction, knows his first chapter will be to ensure Stoke get enough points to be sure of staying up. Fester, who's serving the first of a two-match suspension that will also rule him out of the next game against Tranmere, but this uh, Vickers-Pearson partnership in the centre of Middlesbrough's defence is have plenty of time to cement. They're very much the focal point of the last Middlesbrough promotion campaign from this division. It's a good, a good pairing. Brian and always delighted with these two, especially the big fella, the captain. And Campbell here has got away from Hallsgrove. Muggleton not really sure where that was going, stuck his arm out to turn it away. I think the problem here is Campbell gets through. I don't think he's got another option here, Rob. You'll see Hignett trying to get in the box in a minute. And he's had a look up, there's nothing on. It's an acute angle, but he, does a, he doesn't have an option. You know, to score from there against Muggleton would be one heck of a goal. Had he support, I think the kid would have used his left foot across the box. And what he has done is buy time for plenty of support now for this corner which is taken by Townsend and Pearson's head up and the captain Marvel strikes for Middlesbrough they've been patient in the opening quarter of an hour and get their reward well this has helped in by Tosh McKinley I don't think he could have done too much about it but the marking shocking Pearson peels away from Whittle and McKinley with a left foot whacks it in the back of the net could have done better maybe if he'd have got the right foot to it but McKinley well Stoke fans might be saying, where did he come from? Just with a left foot, whacks it in the net. Bad marking from Stoke's defence. Here's Ali Pickering. Vickers. Yeah, the service to the front players has got to be better. You know, Keane made a great run there. Pickering's ball again, favouring the defender. Well won by Wallace, though, from Somerville. He's looking for support, is it going to carry? The challenge was from Baker and the penalty is given. The challenge on Tosh McKinley, Baker protests his innocence, Schwarzer carries on the protest to Phil Richards too, but he pointed to the spot. Well, I think this is a pen. Just there, he catches him, doesn't he? He might have slightly got a touch on the ball, but really, I don't think he should be diving in there. And McKinley definitely gets a touch with the left foot, down he goes, that's a penalty. Baker a little bit, well, inexperienced, maybe shouldn't be diving in there. Good play, though, from Ray Wallace. He'd give McKinley a chance to get alongside him, then deliver the pass. Well said, the last lead goal scorer for Stoke, other than Thornton for Scythe, was Graham Kavanagh from a penalty. Two, he scored from the spot in the league already this season. And now against his former club, what a big moment this is. Is he going to bring Stoke back into this contest? in Chris Kamara's first home game in charge. It's Kavanagh.
against Schwarzer. And he's done it! The little shuffle, but a perfect hit, and it's 1-1. What, what a good penalty that was. Cavan, as you say, with a shuffle, but didn't he ping it in well? The Schwartz is intimidating, look at the size of him. And that's a smashing finish. Right foot, got a bit of loft on it, but power as well. There's the shuffle, bang, Schwartz goes the right way. But the elevation, and there's, look at the smile on the manager's face. We're back in it. Stoke with just one victory in their last 13 matches in all competitions. That was the victory that they achieved here the last time the Sky Cameras were here for the game against Bradford. Pignett. Moreno. He saw the opening and he went for it. And what a wise decision it proves. What a good start from Moreno. He looked, he looked very comfortable on the ball. Good vision, good touch. This time showing he knows where the back of the net is. A little bit lucky that it comes off Baker and McKinley. He just sweeps it on the left foot, drills it low and past Muggleton. And suddenly, Burra, go ahead. Good strike this on the left foot. Moreno whacks it past Tweed in the far corner, kept it low. And that's a quality finish from the Bolivian. Maybe in off the post, smashing strike. 2-1, Burra. Muggleton looks on, helpless. And it was deflected. Right through by Cavanaugh. Lightbourne, Holsgrove, Whittle, not posing an aerial threat. This is Tiato. It's an inviting cross. Tipped over. Lightbourne's header. And Bessett did well. There's Lightbourne again. Swept in by Crow. Stoke in front. The goal on 32 minutes. And it's young Dean Crow. Just 18 on his first home league start of the season. And he's taken his chance with flying colours here, but back up Forest. Rogers! Terrific response from Nottingham Forest. This is Gemmel. Now Damien Johnson. Good save by Muggleton. Bonalair with a follow up. Top pickering for the throw. Bart Williams again. Gemmel to Armstrong. Desperate raiding here by Nottingham Forest, and they've equalised. What a gallop Oxford United are going. Given a few more months, they could be up with the leaders. But one thing's for sure, they won't be the last to the finishing post this season. Stoke maybe after being hit for five at the Manor. Matt Murphy got the first two. And then Kevin Francis, who runs at goal like a true thoroughbred, made it three and four. Pity are looking more like non-runners every day. Crow got a goal back for them. But Joey Beecham finishes off with a golden boot. First division. We should be a top first division side or a Premier League side, and the stadium is now set up for that. The, the supporters are very upset. If we go down to the second division, uh, we all feel it will take us ten years to get back to the Premier. Well, get into the Premiership. We can't live on the past anymore. Everybody who looks at the football club uh, thinks this football club got a God-given desire. To, um, to be in the Premier League, the old first division, and anything less than that is failure. You know, at this moment in time, our objective is to stay in the first division, and that's the only objective they should be thinking about. Nobody likes to see their team suffer, and for fans of Stoke City, it all came to a head after a 7-0 home defeat by Birmingham in January. Chairman Peter Coates decided he'd had enough. He resigned, but retained his place on the board. 
the manager's chair attracted a new incumbent. But amidst all the change, the problem remains. A £14 million stadium could end its first year as home to a relegated club. Well, you can't hide it. If you're bottom of the table, you've got to uh, expect that your team deserve to be there. We've got to start to get some points out of the next seven games to draw away from relegation for a club of our size. Relegation to the second division is quite a disaster. One of the main problems is selling the players and not reinvesting the money. Obviously, we've been told recently the money's been used to build the stadium. Now, we didn't know that until recently. We, we guessed it had happened, but, you know, if that's the way it's gone, what was the point in building the stadium? I mean, it's a fantastic stadium. We all love it. But it's been to the detriment now of the football team. By contrast, Chris Kamara was still waiting for his first victory since taking over at Stoke. QPR's Ian Dowie took pity on this predicament by beating his own keeper. Stoke were two up early in the second half. Dean Crow flying in from the wing and bringing Rangers down to earth. Simon Barker pulled a late goal back from the spot, but Rangers are drifting into a relegation battle, only three points above the danger. Division. Six of Reading, seven new signings were on parade, but both goals came from old boys. Michael O'Neill gave Reading the lead. Michael Meeker then beat two defenders to extend their tally. An important win for Reading but they're not out of trouble yet. ...to bring the instant results that could drag this struggling club to safety. Portsmouth also in the bottom three or ahead thanks to John Durnin and set for a vital win. Then the balance shifted. Fullback Ali Pickering was the unlikely catalyst, nailing the top corner. Durban was about to work the first instalment of his miracle. In the dying seconds, Kyle Lightbourne stuck out a leg. A crucial goal. And Stoke dragged themselves out of the bottom three. Sigurdsson and Lightbourne the scorers in their 2-0 win over Norwich, which was not the result Manchester City wanted. It puts them back into the relegation places. Two points separate Stoke and City, and they play each other on the last day of the yeah, season. Great drama at the bottom of the first. Uh, for the first time in their history, one of England's big clubs, Man City, have been relegated to the old third division, now the second. They did what they had to today, beating Stoke at the Britannia Stadium, but elsewhere, victory for Port Vale and for Portsmouth meant both City and Stoke are down. If Joe Royal and his side had known the full extent of the utter frustration that lay ahead, they would surely have climbed into their coach and headed back home. King Clatsy's surprise inclusion in the squad was obviously a bonus for the City fans. As it turned out, the Georgians stayed on the bench for what proved to be an extremely tense first half. The atmosphere wasn't helped by early crowd problems. Thankfully, police nipped that in the bud, but there was no hiding the anxiety on and off the pitch. It was Sean Gota, though, who lifted City's spirits with his cunning lob on the half-hour. And the visitors certainly deserved their second just after the break, Paul Dickoff giving Southall no chance. Stoke hopes were briefly raised when Thorne was finally rewarded for his hard work. But Bradbury's header almost straight from the kickoff ensured there was no way back for the Potters. And Gotha's second put the result beyond any doubt. By then, no news was filtering through from the other games. And further goals from Kevin Herlock. And then Thorne only added to the air of unreality. Trouble flared again outside the ground after the match. Most fans, though, were resigned to their fate. It is a bit of consolation to start losing, like, you know what I mean? Because if they would have won and still gone down, that would hurt me even more. I don't know where we go from here now. I think we're almost dead and buried. We've got to bounce back first time, otherwise we are dead and buried.